So if you're in North America right now, you are probably shaking your head wondering why I bought this because this is one of the most hated Maserati models ever built in the modern era. And honestly, I have no idea why. I kind of have my own thoughts on the car. I'm going to save most of them for a later video, but I just kind of wanted to show you guys some of the highlights here. So the title didn't lie, I actually did buy this car for $8,000 and it had several issues and the person I bought it from was honestly just kind of terrified to start wrenching on it. So that's why we got our deal. Uh, they were originally asking $17,000 for this car, so um, maybe that'll tell you a little bit about it. Um, if you're unfamiliar with the Maserati, I'm going to tell you one thing about it that will probably sum up the car pretty well. The transmission and the stereo were made by the same company. So that probably sums it up pretty good. <laughs> so this car has 93,000 miles on it and honestly that's like exactly where you don't want a Maserati to be. We'll kind of see how long it lasts here. <sighs> Most things work. but. Once again, I just wanted to show you guys the car and tell you a little bit about it and I'll see like my final thoughts for another video. Hold me close till I get up. Time is barely on our side. I don't want to waste what's left. All right, so before I give you guys the first impression of this car, I honestly just kind of wanted to tell you a little bit about this specific car. Um, especially like you know where I am and everything I'm finding out online very quickly that there's actually a, a huge difference in I guess prestige with where this car sits in the market in different countries and I'm not totally sure why that is here in the United States you can pick up a nice one of these for um, often under twenty thousand dollars and you know th this one was eight thousand dollars because there's stuff wrong with it but you can pick up a nice one of these with dealer records for, you know, at or below around $20,000, kind of depending on mileage and, you know, all the typical offenders. All right, so anyway, I wanted to tell you guys a little bit about this particular car, just because I'm sure everybody's wondering why I got this thing for $8,000. I already told you that the person that uh, I bought the car from was kind of terrified to touch it, and it was... It was basically someone that shouldn't have bought this car. It was uh, a little a little towing business in like the middle of nowhere. I think he just saw it at auction. He has like a couple cars he sells, not really a big place. And um, it, it just got worse and worse and worse, the condition of the car and everything. And I, I think they just kind of said, all right, that's it. Um, he actually showed me his receipt for when he bought the car from auction. Uh, showing that he lost uh, a couple dollars on the sale by selling it to me for, uh, you know, eight grand. But, you know, it kind of is what it is, you know. What, what can I do about that? What can he do about that? He got the car out of his life, and I picked up something I'm honestly having a lot of fun with. So I guess that kind of worked out if you look at it that way. Nicely, I'll tell you guys that. Um, we'll kind of get into more of that later, but um, yeah. So I went to go look at this car, and I knew that it wasn't perfect because I talked to the guy on the phone before I drove all the way out there. It was probably about a two-hour drive, maybe a little bit less. And the airbag light was on. Uh, the driver's side window doesn't drop down when you open it to clear the seal. You know, nothing really too big of a deal. And I noticed that the uh, the temp gauge wasn't quite reading, you know, where it was supposed to be for a warmed up vehicle. The check engine light was on. Um, numerous interior blemishes, which I think are, you know, fairly common for any, you know, car that's over like 10 years old. So again, nothing really too crazy here. Um, everyone online always says, you know, to avoid these because the transmissions are terrible and they break all the time and, you know, they cost a lot of money and, um, you know, all that stuff was fine, so I decided to buy it. I drove it home. Um, fortunately, no real problems, although I definitely noticed that on the way home, it was definitely a little bit worse than I expected. And, you know, I had the car on the lift, so, like, I knew that the ball joints were bad. I knew that the inner tie rods were bad. I knew that the car needed uh, rear lower control arms because all the bushings were shot, and my 
Maserati only sells them as a whole unit. So I really knew what I was getting into here. So it's not like I tried to get a steal and you know, I'm disappointed with it. I, I very much knew what I was buying and I'm actually very much enjoying it. Um, I like buying cars at a bargain that need work because I know that I can kind of fix them to my own specification. And that's really what I wanted to do here. And um, kind of behind the scenes, I've been doing a little bit of repair work on this car. Um, I put a new thermostat in it. Um, the guy that sold it to me was dishonest and he said that it had a new thermostat. So probably about 15, 20 minutes into my drive home, the check engine light came on and you know, I got the codes read at home and big surprise, it was a uh, uh, low temperature threshold code. And it also had an O2 code that I was hoping went away. I put the new thermostat in and fortunately that code hasn't come back. It's been over 200 miles so far. So I'm pretty sure that's gonna be gone uh, for good. I just have to kind of fix all the other things at this point that I knew were wrong with the car. Oh, and uh, this one's on me, but this car also needs the heater core uh, repaired. If you're not familiar with these Maseratis, it's a common thing that uh, the heater cores blow out and they basically just trickle coolant into the interior of the car. But anyway, I guess that's a good segue into, you know, what I think of the actual car. Uh, if you guys have been following this channel for a while, you know that I had my Aston Martin DB9 and I love that car. I still think that's probably one of the best entries into the uh, exotic car segment. It's a car that doesn't cost a lot to run. Uh, yeah, uh, things can be a little pricey if, you know, bad things happen, but um, fortunately, things like that are pretty uncommon, so it was a great car to buy. But anyway, uh, I sold my Aston Martin uh, last September, and I was kind of itching to get something else, and that's when this Maserati came up real cheap, and <laughs> well, here we are. But um, I'm sure most of you guys watching this have seen like the Doug DeMuro videos if you're in North America. and. Um, basically, there's no shortage of posts on the internet, people crapping on this car, and uh, particularly the transmission, and, uh, the, the less than adequate build quality, and you know, everything else that kind of comes along with a non-top tier Italian car, I guess you could say. Overall, it's really not too bad. Um, I am having a lot of fun driving this car. Um, if you have the transmission in sport mode, it's really not that bad. Um, just because this shares the same system as uh, a lot of the Ferraris from the 2000s, uh, it really has the similar uh, shifting uh, feel to one of those cars. I actually drove a Ferrari 360 uh, a couple weeks ago, and it, it had a very similar, if not identical, feel. Um, the car shifted like very quickly up high, just like this one does. All right, the last thing I want to tell you guys about the transmission is I'm kind of fed up with people online talking about, you know, how terrible this is. And it's for people that have never owned it. And it's usually these same people that don't realize that it's actually like the same shifting actuation system as that's on the earlier 2000s Ferrari. So I said earlier, um, either they're both junk or neither one of them is junk. So kind of take your pick here, you guys. Um, I think you're holding this car to unreasonably low standards. Um, the only real point you have is for how cheap of a car this costs, it's by far more expensive to own and keep running than anything else in this price range. You know, even if I bought this car at $20,000, you're still paying like seven, ten thousand dollars um, for a clutch job. And you know, that's something that, you know, that's money that you would spend on a Ferrari. So, you know, if you look at it that way, then, you know, the car makes no sense to own. But if you want a Maserati and you don't really want a Ferrari or, you know, you can't afford it or whatever, but you can afford the maintenance or you do your own wrenching, a car like this suddenly becomes a really interesting prospect. All right, I think that's about enough for the transmission. Um, everybody always talks about that. Um, I want to share the rest of the car because, you know, I mean, after all, there is a whole car here, right? Um, I love the way this thing drives. Um, it's it's more than just sporty. Um, it, it's very tossable in turns and stuff like that. It's very responsive, especially when the car is in sport mode. Um, it has the active handling on it, so when you put the thing in sport, uh, it's a little more bumpy because it has those active shocks on it. <laughs> bumpy roads here, kinda. Ugh. But yeah, I really like the way this car drives, you guys. Um, if I was blindfolded, I would definitely think that I'm in something much more expensive. 
Um, so there's that. The, the handling is good, even though uh, for a, a 2 plus 2 coupe, it's kind of a longer vehicle. The Spider probably handles a little better, although I kind of question the weight differences. Uh, you know, a car like this is longer, but I don't know. I'm not really too bent out of shape about it. I'm, I'm content with the way this thing runs and drives. Um, it definitely puts a smile on my face throwing this thing into turns. Um, especially with the summer tires that I put on. <laughs> it, it'll really just kind of go wherever you point it. Um, it. It does whatever you ask it to, more or less. I won't say it turns as many heads as the Aston did, but it has that really cool exhaust note. So people that are into cars will you know, hear it driving by if I'm in a town or something, and they'll know that this isn't like a Mustang or something like that. Even if they don't really know what it is, they know that it's not a Mustang. So um, it's definitely got a unique presence on the road in my opinion. And um, I'll just give you guys my overall conclusion, I guess. Um, if high maintenance bills don't scare you or you do your own wrenching, I think this would be a great car to buy, great car to own. Um, it's not gonna break the bank to buy, but remember, you gotta set aside like a disgusting amount of money every year. Um, I would set aside no less than probably $7,000 a year um, if you plan to drive this car about 5,000 miles. Um, you probably won't actually use that, but if you buy a car with no records like I did and things like the heater core punch you in the face and you can't do that yourself, you're gonna spend a lot of money. I think that job has 18 hours of labor tied to it, something like that, like just that job alone. And I think I mentioned the control arms earlier, for example. Um, those control arms are gonna cost me about $2,000 a piece. So we're just about $4,500 after tax and shipping, and that's two components on the car. And not only that, it's half of what I paid for the whole thing. Um, this car is undoubtedly mechanically total, um, if you look at your cars from that perspective. So that's definitely something that you need to consider whenever you, you know, buy something like this, especially as cheap as I did. Um, you can buy a fully sorted car for 20, but you're still gonna have those, uh, you know, surprise clutch expenses. So I guess overall the question is, would I buy this car again? And the answer is undoubtedly yes. I'm having a ton of fun with it. Um, even I know that it's really cheap. Uh, this car bats way out of its league financially with cars that were much more expensive. I've already taken the car on um, hour plus uh, road trips, rallies with my friends, and they've all got much more expensive cars. And uh, this thing is has no problem keeping up. I mean, it's got like 385 horsepower. Uh, it shifts very quickly. Uh, I'm definitely beyond just content with this car for, you know, how little I am into it. Um, I would definitely consider you buying them, and I can't wait to show you guys future videos for what I do with this car. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.